Welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and Her Missionaries. We wanted you to notice that we had changed our address because of what they were charging us for a, a business post office box. We thought were unreasonable, so we're just getting them sent to everything that you send sent to our house now. And we want to assure you uh, what we're doing with uh, your support is that we have been blessed with an open door of opportunity in the uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo. And we are now mentoring uh, over 200 pastors uh, with uh, the Aaron and Her um, uh, uh, synopsis, the signs of the times that indicate the Lord's return. And then we're going to build on that. So uh, we're also uh, building a school there uh, with Pastor Gershon Bayoya. And not only will it be a school teaching the signs of the times, uh, as the Lord has laid them out along with the rest of the Word of God, but also there's going to be a radio station in that school. So every time we get up to about $500, or not about, but every time we get $500, we send it that way. So make sure that you take note of that address change. I don't think um, uh, uh, the post office is going to send them to me if you send them after they close the post office box. So look for that, please. Now, I want to preach to you tonight. Uh, and teach you uh, as we've been looking through the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And in chapter 28, we've been on it now for about, uh, this is our sixth week. In chapter 28, what you find is the contrast between a nation that God blesses as opposed to a nation that God has cursed, okay? And, and what we find in the first 13 verses is that God promised a a blessing to any nation that will honor him. And he was speaking to Israel and uh, Judah in particular um, in this Deuteronomy chapter 28, or Judah would be the one that would receive the blessings later on, I should say. Uh, but this applies to all nations, which we'll show you. And also, as we moved into verse 14 and 15, we see the transition for those nations, which Israel was included, uh, that uh, forget God and, and tell God they don't want him anymore. And then God said, these curses will come upon you and overtake you as we have uh, moved past verse 14 and 15. We'll show you again tonight. Now, this is a series of America in prophecy. I didn't plan it during election time, but God did. Amen. Amen. Uh, I watch uh, Pastor Tony Evans every Sunday morning, and he, I know he's doing it on purpose because it is election time. And I thought, well, God lined me up in, in my own ignorance. God still lined me up for just the right time. Amen. God's always on time. Amen. God knows what's going on. Uh, so I'm just thankful to be a part of it in any small way that he would use me. America in prophecy. Now this is, today is lesson number two in part five. Okay, when we got to part five, we, look, we started looking at um, a cursed government. And we ask ourselves, do we see, did we, have we seen the blessings that God talked about in the first part of Deuteronomy? And indeed we have in America. But are we now seeing the curses and, and that are on America? We looked at our economy, we looked at, our, at the family, the biblical family, and now we're looking at our government and we are finding one curse after another uh, happening before our very eyes. So this is lesson two in part five, a cursed government. Now today I'm going to look at the stranger, the stranger, okay? Now, God will honor any nation that honors him, that honors him through his only begotten son, who is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and no man comes to the Father except by him. Mm -hmm. uh, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only true, wise, living God, okay? And only through worship of Jesus Christ and honoring his only begotten son, that's how we glorify God Almighty. And God will bless any nation that blesses his son. But look what he says in Psalm 917. He said, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Now that stand, stood for Israel, his chosen people. I don't know what makes us think here in America that we can tell God we don't want him in our schools, we don't want him in the, uh, our government, we don't even want him in our families anymore, we don't want him in society and in, in, in our entertainment, and, and God treat us any differently. That's a promise right there. All promises are not 
and positive in nature. This is negative, you see. It, every nation will be turned into hell. And I believe we're seeing hell in our streets and in our schools. We didn't see school shootings when I was growing up, not like this. Now, hundreds every year. And uh, now he's not talking about some made up God. He's talking about the true living God. Amen. The God of the Bible, that old King James Bible. Amen. In 2 Chronicles 7 14, the Bible says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Now, that he's talking to a nation, but he's talking about to believers within a nation. He said, if my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Mm -hmm. Now, one way we know the church has done backslid on God is our land needs to be healed. Yeah. Yeah. He said, if you was right, yeah. if you was right with me, if my people, which are called by my name, you know, Christian means to be Christ-like, right? So, so if, if our land is in trouble, judgment begins at the house of God because the house, house of God's went out of business is the reason we got in this shape. Amen. I don't believe with all my heart, I don't believe God goes to every church that opens their doors on Sunday morning. Amen. He, he, this call is to Christians to humble ourselves. We've got to realize we're in trouble. I believe with all my heart that every pastor in every church ought to change the way we worship and the way that we do things now. And we ought to fill our altars with broken hearts for what's going on in our land and what's going on in the world because of our land. And for the world, our children, our grandchildren are going to have to live in the land that this church, this generation has left them. I believe that with all my heart. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 14. Look at this real closely. It says, and thou, shalt, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left. I thought that kind of funny that he said to the right or to the left. You know, like our government seems to be either way too far to the right or way too far to the left. But then look what he says. And I've read the Bible for 40 years now. I've studied it hard for 40 years. And it says, and then go after other gods to serve them. Every time I seen that, I would always think, what's in me? What does that mean? What's other gods? And, and I always thought this. I always thought, well, anything or anybody that you worship or love or serve more than you worship, love, or serve the Lord God Almighty, then that is an idol. And in a sense, that's true. But when you really study, you'll find out in the Old Testament that God or these gods had names. And the Bible gives them names. So they're real. They're not just a, fig, a, a figment of someone's imagination. These gods are real. And what you'll find out behind each god is a demon, a fallen demon that fell with Satan with the third of the angelic host that fell in rebellion against God. But each god has its, or each one of these false gods or this demon has those that he has possessed to carry out certain sins. You see, so what we're doing, and I'm working with some people, and what we're going to do is we're going to put together charts, and we're going to introduce these gods to you, and the sin that they brought on the people, and how that the people followed after them. Remember, they was always finding idols in their tents, and nothing angered God. The first commandment is not to worship any other god before me, right? So we're, I'm going to work real hard, and we're going to put together these charts, and we're going to show you the names of these gods and when they and when they came to be and how people worshiped them and the certain sins that they ushered in. And what you're going to find is in the 60s, America began to kick God out of the school. We don't want the Bible for a textbook. We don't want the Ten Commandments hanging up in the schools of the courthouse. We want to be sexually liberated and all these things. And you'll find these gods that after Baal comes in, and, and the, the worship of materialism, and then, then the humanist um, uh, mixed with some Eastern mysticism comes to place, and you'll find that America, as, remember that house that got swept out? They said when that house got swept out, the demons wandered around. They didn't die. When, when the Lord cast them demons in them hogs, and they run over the hill and went down and killed themselves, the demons didn't die. They got out and walked on. The hogs died, but the demons still there. But when he, they come back and found the house empty, it had swept, uh, swept clean. When, when America, you see, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again and people began to be born again and had the word of God and believed the word of God, 
the, the, the gods had to leave. They got shut down. The gods of Rome and Egypt, them, them gods that you see. So now they come back when America has kicked God out after we knew God. After we knew the Lord, they've come back and we can name them by name and show you how America has bowed down to worship them. And it, and, and it might surprise you how many have snuck up on you that you're not aware of because it surprises me. I knew, I knew something's going on. I just didn't have it all figured out and I still don't, but I'm working on it. And I'll bring that to you as we start get clear about it and get it lined out. Deuteronomy 28, 15, but it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we asked ourselves, have these curses overtaken us in America? America's not specifically mentioned in the Bible but we're part of all nations, correct? Yeah. So that applies to all nations. So indeed, are these, are these curses, are these curses coming upon America? Now we see people all the time that you witness to and talk to and you show them the word of God, they don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it either. But I found that you've got to face up to what's really going on if you're going to amount to anything for God or if you're ever going to be able to help anybody, you've got to learn what the truth is. No matter how ugly it is, no matter how painful it is, that's one one reason I'm glad that I wasn't around in Bible times and God wrote my life story in there. Amen. I don't want everybody knowing yeah, that because right. he did, he didn't mix words. He told it just like it was. You see, we Amen. we've got to know the truth. So let's look at a government curse tonight. Look at Deuteronomy 28 verse 43. He said, "We're going to preach to you on the, or teach you tonight, well, however God wants us to do it, on the stranger. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee, very high, and thou shalt come down very low." I'm going to talk to you tonight about this awful, awful uh, thing that we've got going on in our land, uh, and we call them illegal immigrants. And I'm not saying that they're awful; they're wonderful. I'm saying how we treat them is awful. And what we do for them is awful. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. The difference between a, a legal immigrant and an illegal immigrant is a legal immigrant becomes an instant citizen, equal to all other citizens. An illegal immigrant is never equal never. to a citizen. Never. never. So there's somebody that's wanting to keep them illegal. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. And we're going to look at that tonight. There are other strangers in our land uh, that could defeat us from within. And, and I believe that's how America, if and when she gets defeated, will be from within. Yeah. China, for an example, uh, not by Chinese folks, but by Chinese finances for the money. The money that, that they have invested and that we owe them, you see. China's worked hard, and they're very smart. They're very smart, and we're very slow, and, and haven't worked near that hard, my friends. And you would not believe uh, the control that is uh, China's in America. We are a nation. We are a nation that has, uh, of immigrants. We're all immigrants, right? Our, our forefathers were immigrants. Uh, America began with European immigrants. And these white human, uh, European immigrants came and eventually conquered the native people. That's the only way to say it. Mm -hmm. There was no assimilation. It was a conquering. Yeah. It was a conquering. We didn't treat them right. We didn't do them right. And we still have it. So America began on the wrong foot by a bunch of white people conquering people that were not white. And they called it, we called it manifest destiny, like God was telling us to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now the history of America is that of European people conquering Native American people, which includes also Mexican people. The Native American scattered, were scattered throughout all of America. And they, they, there were many different tribes, mm -hmm. many different languages, many different uh, customs, beliefs, and cultures. And then there was those that belonged to Mexico. We, we call them Mexicans. 
They were, they were populated through the uh, southwestern portion of the United States and particularly in what we call the state of Texas and the state of California. Eventually, European immigrants conquered them all and claimed the land from the Atlantic to the Pacific. When I say European immigrants, I'm saying white people. It's just the truth, white people, okay? So they believed that this was a white people's land. That's right. I got enough guts to say it. It's the truth. And then when French or France and Britain still controlled interests and we've seen two wars with uh, Britain, with England, and then we bought France out because they was broke because of so many wars. So when the dust settled, America or the America become the United States of America. And it was a land that said of itself that it was a land of the free, home of the brave and land of the free. Well, I found when I studied the true history that it was free if you was white. But if you wasn't, if you wasn't, then you were not free. And America has paid for that with their blood and we continue to pay for this terrible sin even today, even today, which is rightfully so. And I'm gonna show you a part of that today that's going on that the church is blind to. I believe with all my heart. And the church staying silent is the reason it happened in the first place. God said, if you take a human being captive and turn them into a slave, that you should be executed for that. Where was the church at when all that was going on? Bowing down to society. I'm not in the bowing down type of mood, my friends. If anything is going to help America, it's telling the truth. Amen. It's telling the truth. We're still paying for it today. Our, fathers, our, our forefathers grew up a constitution based on the Bible. Many people say, well, all the forefathers were not Christian. No, they weren't. Some of them was downright heathens. But God was trying to send a light to the world. God was trying to make a country where all men were free and all men were equal and that Jesus Christ was honored and preached and shared and that everyone was welcome and everyone was treated with dignity and respect and the same laws applied to the rich as it did to the poor, you see. God was given this world a chance through America. We had the three branches based on God's administration of the universe in our government. Our form of government would be described nearly 100 years later by President Abraham Lincoln as the only form of government on the earth established as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Amen? Amen. A government that is for all people means that it includes all people. Yes. Amen. All people equal. What hypocrites we were in the beginning mm -hmm. and still are to a large degree, which we're going to see today. All men are equal. Mm -hmm. It don't matter where you're from. It don't matter your ancestry. It don't matter your color. It don't matter... As far as the government's concerned, it don't matter your religion. All human beings are equal in the sight of God and should be treated so by every other human being, Amen. especially Christians. Amen. Abraham Lincoln stood on the bloody battlefield of Gettysburg when he made this address. The USA is a land where all people can own the land. Mm -hmm. Go around the world, my friends, it ain't like that everywhere. Yeah. They like that everywhere. The United States of America is supposed to be a land of opportunity for all people, not just white people. It's supposed to be a land of opportunity where anyone could be anything. I'm not afraid to compete against any other human being with my hard work and for how much I've worked 
and let the chips fall where they may. You see, it's wrong to want to have an advantage because of your race. Amen, preacher. Boy, you on it tonight. Amen. 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 Many people have died to win this freedom of government so that government would not rule over them. Amen. Yes. But to be a form of government made up of them. All peoples. All peoples. The Native Americans and the Mexicans and, and, and those that came from Africa should have been involved in this as free people. Yes. From the beginning, my friends, and we'd have a lot better nation than we have today, and it's going on today even worse than then. Mm -hmm. Not even worse, but it's go I don't know. God had to decide what's worse. Mm -hmm. But to be a form of government made up of us all, not just white people, directed by us all, mm -hmm. not just white people, and certainly for us all, but it shouldn't turn around and go against white people either. There has to be some forgiveness. There has to be some kindness. There has, listen, we've got to come together as a unified people where the government works for all of us because it's by us all and it's of us all. Many have died to maintain this form of government. Many more will die to keep it from perishing from the earth in the future. Every country in the world would love to own America. So far, we've been strong enough to keep her. Today, freedom has enemies both foreign and domestic. Our government is deeply divided as to the role of government and what it should play in freedom. Today, we see freedom can be taken away, can be lost, and in particular, since we're talking about government, it can be taken away and lost by politicians. Make no mistake. God help me. Make no mistake. No one has the right, no one has the freedom to play God. No one has the right and no one has the freedom to kill an unborn child. You are not God. Amen. God makes that decision. Yes. The trouble is too many people are too afraid to die. Amen? Amen? If the Lord's in you and you know heaven's your home, then you shouldn't be so afraid. Make no mistake, my friends, no one has the right to steal. Amen. On the contrary, you have a right to work so that you might have to provide for your family and then also to provide for others that are in need. Mm -hmm. No one has the right to hurt someone else. Amen. No one has the right to murder someone else. Amen. No one has the right to exploit or to enslave another human being. No one has the right to promote indecency, profanity, much less pornography. But on the other hand, my friends, it is the government's responsibility, according to all of the Bible, to punish criminals. Yes. Yes. It is the government's responsibility, not us as citizens. It's the government's responsibility to demand an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That means equal punishment as to the crime. Yes. And the reason people are doing what they're doing is because 50% of them never get caught. And the ones that do get caught get a slap on the wrist according to what state you live in. I was watching a show the other day. This 19-year-old boy went into a home. He took a pickaxe. And he killed the mom and he killed the daddy. And he killed the little boy or the teenage boy. And he got 25 years. Each life worth eight years. No, my friends. If the, it is the government's responsibility. It is, it is a sin against God and against the citizens of this country when you can brutally, brutally, premeditatedly, not out of, a, not out of hot blood when you just get in a fight and somebody gets killed, but I'm talking about thinking about it in cold blood and planning it out and premeditation. You take the life of three people like that, then the punishment should be the same as what you dealt out. Yes. And 
And my friends, if that gets accomplished, people will quit doing the things they're doing to a large degree. Amen. 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 Today we find a battle between two parties that have stark differences in ideologies as to what freedom looks like. One party has went so far left to believe the government should control every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem with government handouts, then you get dependent on the government. Okay, there should be a hand up, but not a hand out, you yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Provide work, and when you provide work, you provide dignity to those that are in need of work. Mm -hmm. But my friends, when the government controls every aspect of our lives, that can only lead to the government becoming our king mm -hmm. and we his subjects. The king will own everything and we will live to serve the king. May I say today, my friends, no party owns me as a child of God. Amen. Listen, I don't, no labor union owns me. Amen. No creed, no race, mm -hmm. but Christianity. As a blood-bought child of God, I had no king but Jesus. You see? Yeah. And it is my goal and my job to prefer my brother, to prefer my neighbor over me, to put others in front of me, you see. It's the Lord that owns me. I'm bought and paid for with his blood. Amen. 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 And I'll vote accordingly, and I'll live according to his will, yes. whether the government likes it or not. Amen. One of the ways freedom haters are bringing this about is through illegal immigration. That's right. <clears throat> In this case, the stranger. Make no mistake, the open border, policies, open border policies are a part of a plan to take away freedom, both from Americans and illegal aliens or illegal immigrants. Yes. Here comes the truth that you might not have thought, thought of. Immigration, the difference between being legal and being illegal to me is formality. Formality. Now, I know I'm not going to sound like some educated uh, professor or something, but I'm just going to use words that everybody can understand. And I think maybe the educated law professors ought to learn this little phrase. Well, that's just stupid. Yeah. You don't have to have much of an education to realize that's just stupid. In order for a person born in another country to become a legal American citizen, it takes a lot of money that a lot of people that are hurt in this world don't have. Good people. Good people. Moms and dads that'll work from daylight to dark. Kids that just want to change takes a lot of time, an incredible amount of red tape. Bureaucracy is a roadblock for most wanting to come to our country legally. Well, that's just stupid. Mm -hmm. It's so complicated and really no way to start the process. Now get this, without help from an American citizen or the government before you enter. That knocks most of them, most people out that wants to come here. Mm -hmm. That's just stupid. <laughs> it's like our adoption policy, Sister Pam. Why, when we have so many babies that need a loving home, a mom and a dad, and we got moms and dads all over our countries, husbands and wives that can't have children or have any more children and would love to adopt, but it's a long, grown out process. You can go straight to China and get a child or straight to some other country and get a child. That's just stupid. That's politics for you. All right, say I'm in Mexico and I want a better life and I can see in America the land of the free. Huh? The home of the brave, the land of the free. I'd like to go there. I am willing because it's so hard to come across legally to walk hundreds of miles to start with with my babies. Coming across the border illegally. I'm willing to take my chances with the cartels, to take my chances with the coyotes, and I'm not talking about the dog type. 
Yeah. With the desert, hunger and thirst, possible molestation and brutality of thieves and robbers, and then once they get across, hiding in fear all the time from the border patrol first and then ICE. It's easier than coming across legally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's just stupid. Either we have room in America or we don't. <coughs> if, if America decides we don't have room or we can't afford it, then shut the borders down. If we do have room, and we can afford it, and we ought to be kind, and we ought to be gracious, and we ought to be loving, then why not make a simple path to citizenship? Amen. America needs to get her house in order. Mm -hmm. Look at this picture. This is a picture of the Statue of Liberty. You know what that is behind it? Ellis Island. Ellis Island. Ellis Island. Oh, Ellis, yeah. <laughs> Ellis Island. Now, the Statue of Liberty was given to us by France because of our supposedly free government with the inscription on the base of it that says, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. It does not say give us your criminals, your cartels, your terrorists, your drugs, your death, your mayhem. But with open borders, that's what, and not all, not even near all, just a small percentage, but it only takes a few, right? Here's what it's really saying now. Here's my whole point. Give us, come here illegally. We welcome you to come here illegally and we will enslave you mm -hmm. and never make you equal to us. That's exactly why it's being allowed to go on. Mm -hmm. Nancy and I have met over the last few years one of the most precious women that you've ever met. And her daughter, when she speaks, my heart melts. She's so precious. She's here illegally from Mexico. We live on a barrier island in Florida. God never meant for no human beings to live on a barrier island. They're there because they absorb the storms, right? She lives there to be a housekeeper, hardest working person, not man or woman, person. She's about that tall. And she worked three men under the table. Mm -hmm. And the most precious, God fearing, loveless person you've ever met. Her daughter come here and work with her all day. We told her not to do that, but she does it anyway. She don't work for us, per se. But anyway. When the hurricane come, they said on the news, it's gonna be a category five, possibly a category five. It was a category four, possibly a category five. That's sustained winds for a, of 155 mile an hour set on top of that island. Fort Myers Beach set on top of that island for six hours, moving slowly. 155 mile an hour winds sustained. 17 foot tidal surge with four foot waves on top of it. And she was afraid to leave. She was afraid to leave, afraid that she'd get sent back to Mexico where there was nothing. And her daughter's got a full scholarship to any college. She's in like the ninth or 10th grade. She's got a full scholarship because of her hard work and dedication, a full scholarship for any school in Florida. She don't want to go back there. She left for a reason, but she's afraid. My friends, I'm telling you that something is broke. Something is wrong. 
when a country will not take in, a country of immigrants will not take in and love and care for people that want to work and want to do right. And the reason is because people want cheap labor Amen. and people want to enslave others. Amen. That's the truth. Yeah. But that's just part of it. Ellis Island, now get this, Ellis Island could process immigrants usually in just a few hours. Just a few hours. 1900 a day, Karen. You, walk, you get off the boat, you walk into Ellis Island, a few hours later you walk out a citizen with a social security card. That's the way it ought to be. Either we're gonna, either we're gonna, we've got room for people to come and we can afford it, or we don't. I don't think we can afford not to. They welcomed, Ellis Island welcomed over 12 million immigrants. 12 million to the shores and made them citizens. 40% of all Americans have one ancestor that came through Ellis Island. They had a hospital to treat the sick. They document you. You tell me in the age of computers that we cannot research and vet people in a matter of moments, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Just as much as they can uh, vet any other American citizen, amen? Yeah. Yeah. And either you go to jail <laughs> when you come into the new Ellis Island. Why don't we build an Ellis Island? Mm -hmm. Huh? Why don't we process people that want to come here and make them legal citizens? There's a lot of advantages to that. Especially to them, but also to us. You see? You walk into that, you walk out an American citizen. You see, that makes you equal with all other American citizens. And you get to take on our debt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You get to, listen, you get to take on our debt load. Amen? Mm -hmm. Why can't we make a clear pathway to citizenship, somebody's standing in the way, and it's for evil intent. They can start paying income taxes immediately. Immediately. Pay them back in Ellis Island for whatever it costs to build it. Amen? Yeah. It would be, it would pay for itself. If immigration was done properly, now get this, if immigration was done properly, all the immigrants wouldn't be beholden to one certain party. You got that right. Our national security is at stake. You see, if we do it legally and then people do it illegally, then you arrest them and you have severe punishment to deter people coming in illegally. Right? This open door policy with no processing, no checking the health, no background check, is no, there is no accountability, is suicide for America. It is absolute suicide. The truth is, the left's agenda has always been to purchase votes with political favors. When they discover, when the radical left, this progressive liberal agenda, when they discover a group of voters that have been disenfranchised by either social sentiment or by civil laws, the left will make laws and promises to provide money, rights, protection, and governmental benefits to that segment of society, regardless of the Constitution and regardless of what the Word of God says about it. Saying all the time we are of God while all the time disobeying His laws. This vote buying has divided our country like nothing else. For an example, here's a good example of very ingenious, but we ought to be able to see through it. The president comes up and says, well, we're going to um, pass the bill. I've got the votes. He's just talking about people sitting on his couch in the Oval Office, I guess, because he had the votes. Mm -hmm. And I've got the votes. We're going to pass this bill of student debt relief. Student debt relief bill. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what did that do? It didn't have a snowball's chance of passing. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. But it, it, it done what he, what he set out to do because when it don't pass, he can say, well, look what those mean old uh, Republicans did. You see? So he's got their vote whether it passed or not. That's millions of votes that he's got moms and dads 
and the children that signed on the dotted line, and it's not it's not tax relief, it's it's tax uh, 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 transference. He just transfers it on to the other people. You see, yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. got to be paid, right. but he is successful because most of those people can't see through that, and they're going to vote for him. You see, instead of doing what's right for America, it's time that all of us say, listen, just something that benefits me, if it don't benefit all of us, then it's not what we ought to do. Amen? Amen. How can you, when you're trillions and trillions of dollars in debt, say I'm going to spend millions and millions and billions of dollars on this and that and every other thing? It's the same mode of operation that has left the open door uh, policies. Rapidly causing Deuteronomy 2843 to come to pass. How does the stranger within America get above the very high while the average citizen comes down very low? The ballot box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ballot box. Now, working hard also. What I've seen of immigrants is that they'll work and they'll work hard. Oh, yeah. And what I've seen of most Americans or a lot of Americans is they've learned how to get money without working. So they just look for a way not to have to work. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing us down. Amen. Listen to this. Did you know that a person can register to vote? Now keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. If it works for those coming from South America, it can work for all other people groups from all around the world. And they're watching. Did you know that a person can register to vote with only a driver's license in many states? Yes. In, yes, in 16 states, including the District of Columbia, it does not require a Social Security number to vote. Just proof of residence for the previous 30 days prior to registration to vote. Who, you gonna, who are they going to vote for? The ones that are going to come in without not realizing that they're turning them into slaves. You can vote in all federal elections with just a driver's license in 16 states plus the District of Columbia. Let's see, in New York, a green card holder is eligible to vote if they will live in the city 30 consecutive days before registering. But you see, if they'd have made them a legal citizen when they come in, then they could look at everything. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. right. I'm an American. I'm going to vote for the politician mm -hmm. or the candidate that does right for America mm -hmm. under the leadership of God. Amen. But not that this way it keeps them enslaved. Mm -hmm. It keeps them enslaved to that party. Because if the, oh, if the mean old Republicans ever get in, they're going to start shipping us back home, right? Mm -hmm. But what the Republicans ought to say, no, when we, if we get in, we're going to make you an easy pathway to citizenship, make you equal, so you can see things for the way they are and vote according to the conscience of your heart and the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> I had a lot of things here about examples and stuff. Uh, uh, and numbers, all kinds of numbers, but I've, I've preached quite a while. Let me, just, let me just say a few things, just to give you an example. Registration of Hispanic and Latino voters. Now, that's two different people groups. Latinos come from Latin America, and the Mex Mexicans are uh, Hispanic, come from South America, right and down through that way. 16.1 million Hispanics cast a vote for the last pres presidential election. 32 million Hispanic people are registered to vote. 30,627,000 Latino people are registered to vote. That's over 46 million possible votes. The number is only rising with illegal immigration, you see? Uh, so here, immigrants usually settle in groups in specific towns and states. For an example, uh, in states like California, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Texas, this concentration of either Hispanic or Latino voters has been able to vote in Hispanic and Latino candidates to hold public office. The same is true in states like, now, now get this, it's because they're watching, okay? And, and some of my best candidates, Ron DeSantis from Florida. Amen. He, he's the best. He's the best. The governor of Florida, he's the best Hispanic man. I vote for him a hundred times before I vote for anybody else that I know is running for president. I don't have nothing against these people. I love them. 
I think they're good for the country, but I'm going to show you how this works because this can be used against us where the stranger can rise up and be far above us yeah. and take our country away from us. Yeah. And I'm not talking about white people. I'm talking about Americans, all of us, yes. no matter what color. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm talking about all of us because in Minnesota, in Minnesota, the Muslims have infiltrated that country, the Muslim, uh, those that are Muslim uh, from it, Middle Eastern immigrants have come and now they are voting in Muslim candidates mm -hmm. right. into our government. Yeah. And you say, what's wrong with that, Brian? What's wrong with that is, is that there is no Muslim. There is no Muslim, and I'll debate any of them that wants to debate. There is no Muslim that believes in our constitution. There is not, not if they're a practicing Muslim that goes to the mosque. They can't, they can't. Was but, he said he wasn't, he said he was a Christian. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> Y'all gonna get me kicked off YouTube. I'm, I'm skating I'm skating on the edge of it all the time anyway. If you start naming names, I'll get kicked off for sure. And that's okay if that's God's will, because we're on other places too. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Offices such as governors, mayors, congressmen, senators, town council members, and representatives, and so on. Like for an example, in Georgia. Hispanic voter registration has grown by 82.5% since 2020. In California and Texas, Hispanic voters uh, comprise one-third of the voters. One-third. Remember, we took it away from them. Now they're going to take it back. Rightfully so. They deserve it. They deserve it. In Florida, Hispanic registrations grew by 82%. In all states, more Hispanic voters are registered as Democrats than Republicans. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Now listen, I believe that when immigrants come into our country, they ought to assimilate. Our language should be English. Amen. And it should stay English. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. They should, we should not have all these different countries, but everybody should be American. If you want to come here, then become an American. Yes. Amen. Yes. Illegal immigration affects every American negatively, a burden on taxpayers, a burden on our health system, a burden on our legal system. It endangers national security. It robs the lowest paid American citizens of jobs and higher wages. Can we afford millions of illegal immigrants? No. <clears throat> Are we not in debt already trillions of dollars? Yeah. When we went, now, if you look at legal immigration, it's not, it wouldn't be a burden on taxpayers. Mm -hmm. They'd begin to pay taxes right off the bat and be equal to the rest of us, amen? Mm -hmm. That's the way to go. But there's a segment that don't want that to happen. Here's where it's got to in this country. I'm 62 years old and I cannot afford as a retired man to pay for my health insurance. But yet people that won't work, yep. people that won't work first that are American citizens, and then immigrants that work but can't pay in to the income tax system and wants to, so many can get free health care. Yeah. When I've worked all my life, hard mm -hmm. and can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And what the government is doing, and to me it don't seem like a government of the people, for the people, by the people, when it's easier for me, Michael, not to own anything and just become a burden to the taxpayers. <clears throat> That's not the way it's supposed to work. Come word of the state. Yeah, take care of me. 2.7 million foreign-born people have entered the United States illegally in 2022. The open-door policy of this current administration is illegal, and the government is charged by our Constitution to uphold the laws of the land, and if this current administration should be arrested yes. for, not, for not enforcing the laws of the land. Yes, Lord. And what they're doing is running a modern-day slave market. Yes. Amen. 
We talked to that little lady just the other day because I told her I'll sponsor you. I'll do whatever you have to do. Go talk to the immigration lawyer. I'll help you. I'll do whatever. You can move in my house. You and your daughter. Tomorrow. And she called back and said, well, I got to get married to an American citizen. What? So if there's anybody watching, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Social Security works similar. Yeah. Hang on, Doug. <laughs> the reason they had to buy votes is because their policies had failed. Mm -hmm. and, and the illegal immigrant will work hard Amen. and will be honest sure. and God will bless them and they will rise up to their rightful place. They will. Mm -hmm. And they deserve it. Immigrants now view the United States of America as weak. Tom Homan, the former Immigration and Customs Enforcement Director, said the fault lies squarely on this administration. Mark Morgan, the Acting Customs and uh, Border Control Commission, said this is a shameful episode in our history. The rich politicians, they listen in their gated communities, they don't suffer from it. But families, moms and dads all over America are suffering from the tonnage of fentanyl that is killing a generation of people. Mm -hmm. okay. U.S. Customs and Border Patrol said that encounters with illegal immigrants reached a record 227,000 in September alone. And that makes me mad. Yes. That makes me angry, not at the illegal immigrants. My heart is broken for them. But that makes me mad. That, makes, that breaks my heart that we are a country that was not ready to receive them and welcome them in as eagles. Crime rates, percentages, when you look at illegal immigrants as opposed to legal immigrants is much higher, especially in regard to federal crimes. Illegal immigrants per capita have a higher conviction rate in violent crimes such as assault, armed robbery, rape and murder, and so on, above the legal citizen. The cost of illegal immigration on American citizens, 2013, $113 billion. 2017, $116 billion. 2020, $134 billion. $134.9 That's $18.9 billion increase in three years. Now listen, I'm going to hush right here in a minute. As a nation, we must be good but we must be smart. Amen. Look at Deuteronomy 28 and 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And if you take that into context, it's talking about the government. And what we say about what's going on at our borders, that's just stupid. No common sense, no godly wisdom, no regard for what God desires for America. The left will do anything to stay in power. Yes. Amen. At the destruction of America. Yeah, have mercy. Make promises that they won't raise taxes and there's no other way to pay for it mm -hmm. as we're drowning in debt. Here's the answer, my friends. It's the Word of God. Amen. We've got to go Amen. back to the Word of God. That's right. We've got to treat people right. Yeah. And we put on this big facade like we're so wonderful and so great all the while treating people like they're less than we are less than human beings these things halt not to be every curse that is mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 is prevalent in America let me just say this Gary I think you'll like this little illustration I'm going to do this in the way of closing if America was my house if America was my house, here's what I would do. Now, I know I'm not as smart as the presidents and, uh, and the Congress people and the Speaker of the House and all that, but let me just throw a little bit of redneck hillbilly common sense out there. Okay? If this was my house, if America was my house, Michael, the first thing I would do is make sure that I protected my house. You see, if I don't have a home to live in, I can't help nobody else. Right? So the first thing I got to do is make sure that I protect my house. 
my home, right? Mm -hmm. And I told my kids when they were growing up, I said, now, if something bad happens to you, I'll do everything that I can down to the last dime it takes to protect my house because I got to keep my house. If I don't keep my house, I can't help you no more, right? Mm -hmm. But if you act stupid and you won't work, you get on drugs, you become a drunk, and you incur all this debt, daddy ain't bailing you out. If you're too lazy to work, I will be willing to let you lay under a bridge and starve to death. Yes. And I meant it. And I meant it. It's the hardest thing a parent can do. Mm -hmm. So watch their kids suffer. Mm -hmm. But listen, all they're going to do is take your money Amen. and take your house and snort it up their nose and shoot it in their arm and then you ain't going to have no house and you can't help nobody. Right? right? So, if I, if my house is America, I'm going to make sure I keep my house. I want to be good. I want to be a good Christian. I want to bless my kids. Right? I give them a little bit of the inheritance as we go, but the biggest chunk of it is going to be when I leave this world. Amen? Amen. 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 I got a lot to say about that, but I got to move on. <laughs> so, once I know that I've taken care of my house, you see, America needs to take care of America first. Amen. If we can't take care of ourselves, how are we going to take care of somebody else? 30 something trillion dollars in debt, and if you look at the national debt clock, it's ticking like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Millions of dollars all the time. Who are we going to take care of? We're, we're, listen, we're a paper tiger living on a house of cards. That's right. If, if I was, listen, how am I going to help anybody if, if I owe more than I'll ever be able to pay? I can't help my kids when I owe more. I can't help anybody else if I owe more than what I can pay. Bankruptcy is coming. Amen? Amen. And then when I look around and I see I've taken care of my house, my house is in order. I've handled my money right. God's blessed me. Then I'm going to start helping others. That's the way God meant for it to be. Yeah. You see? We're not helping anybody by enslaving them. Amen. Right? Amen. Then you say, hey, I've got room over here for you. Let's throw a cot. You come on in. I've got, I've got, listen, I'm going to help you get a job. I'm going to help you get educated. I'm not going to hand it to you. I'm going to give you a hand up, and I'm going to help you to be everything you want to be. Amen? Right. But we can't do that if we ain't got it to give. They're just going to fall with us. That's right. So America needs to get their house in order. Strength comes and only comes from a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see by the fruits that's coming out of Washington, a lot of people don't know what this is all about. That's right. Amen. Amen. You see, the bloody Savior, nobody wants to admit that he's hanging there because of me. He's hanging there because of my sin. And by his lashes, I'm healed. And what he has done is he has agreed to take on my sin and the wrath of God on him so that he can transfer his righteousness to me. And you see, if you just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm talking to politicians everywhere. If you just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him to forgive you of your sins, he will. And then he'll give you the wisdom to govern our nation. Amen. If you don't believe the word of God and you have not the Holy Spirit living in you, you're not going to be able to do it. Not in this day. Let's all pray for any lost person that might hear it for a government that needs God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you know me and I don't pretend to be anything. And Lord, I, when I speak these words, I think that people would say, well, he thinks he knows something. Well, God, I, I can see simple things. I can see things that's obvious. I know people that's hurting because they can never be equal to other to citizens in this country because of failed policies. I see that as plain as day. And I see that those that have come to our country has made our country better. Oh, Lord, God, please, please bring that politician that would seek to lead our country. Bring them under the conviction of the Holy Ghost that they might see they need to be saved. 
Lord, that you might come to live in them, that we might see common sense, godly decisions being made, that we might be the government that is of the people, and by the people, and for all people, Amen. all people that live in this land. Please, please let us all see that we're all equal at the foot of the cross, that there's none above another. Lord, help us to love everyone more than we love ourselves. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, beloved.